Alcatraz. Just one look at this bleak, foreboding island makes one thing crystal clear. This is not a place for a glamorous vacation. It's isolated, barren, cold and damp. In short, it was the perfect place to teach some of the country's most hardened criminals a lesson. The intent was to serve as a place for those who were uncooperative and disruptive in other prisons and eventually for them to be returned to complete the rest of their sentences afterwards. Most of the prisoners at Alcatraz were notorious bank robbers and murderers. The staff were highly trained in security, but not rehabilitation. During the 29 years it was in use, the prison held some of the most notorious criminals in American history, including gangsters such as Al Capone, Robert Franklin Stroud, known as the Birdman of Alcatraz, George Machine Gun Kelly, Bumpy Johnson, James Whitey Bulger, Mickey Cohen, Arthur R. Doc Barker, and Alvin Creepy Carpus, who served more time at Alcatraz than any other inmate. The site of the island in San Francisco Bay is an eerie one. Over a mile out and often surrounded by a dense sheet of fog, Alcatraz is a prison surrounded by another prison, of ice cold water. This had a psychological effect on the prisoners, quelling any thoughts of escape. Although the island is surrounded by water, it is a literal rock. No water flowed and each week over 1 million gallons were sent to the island. The prison was also unique in that it offered its inmates hot showers. However, this was far from being a courtesy. It was to make the prisoners less familiar with cold water and therefore less inclined to attempt escape. A myth also existed that the bay was infested with sharks. This was not true and the only sharks that lived in the bay were harmless, though the guards kept this secret close to their chests. Alcatraz was built atop a military fort dating back to the 1850s and only became a federal prison in 1934. To inmates, the Spanish dungeon was a product of the old fort and used to torture prisoners who stepped badly out of line. The dungeon, built by the military prisoners between 1901 and 1911, generated many myths among inmates. It was rumoured to have been built during the Spanish Inquisition and was below sea level. Although the old brick and constant dripping made this seem like Likely, the dungeon was a 20th century construction. Punishment at Alcatraz was extreme. At the dungeon, prisoners were chained up standing in total darkness, often with no food and regular beatings. These punishments often lasted for as long as 14 days and by 1942, the dungeon was found to be unnecessarily cruel and closed. Cell Block D was dubbed the hole since the cells were composed of only a hole to be used as a toilet. Inmates were poorly fed while in the hole, beaten often and experienced sensory deprivation for days on end. Alcatraz was a maximum security prison and notoriously rigid in its rules and day-to-day -day life. This coupled with the solitude of being on an island led to the deterioration of many prisoners' mental health. One inmate famously chopped off his fingers while working, but most prisoners were stir-crazy, meaning the mundanity of their everyday lives had them living as husks, repeating their days soullessly. Most nights, guards would practice their shooting on dummies as the prisoners listened. The following day, inmates would walk by these dummies, observing the guards' accuracy. This had a harsh psychological effect on the inmates. Prisoners spent most of their time alone, rarely socializing with other inmates. Visits were highly restrictive and controlled. Allowed only once a month, the inmate was separated by his visitor by a window and a guard closely monitored both the inmate and visitor. In 1934, one of America's most notorious prisoners, gangster Al Capone, was carted off from an Atlanta penitentiary to the United States' most cutting edge prison, a maximum security prison on Alcatraz Island in San Francisco Bay. You'd think that Capone, who was technically imprisoned for tax evasion but spent years as a brutal mafia boss, might have spent his days in jail trying to get out. But by the time he arrived,
arrived at Alcatraz, he was in no condition to flee. In Atlanta, where he had served the initial part of his sentence, he had been given special privileges, entertained near-constant visitors, and used piles of cash to pay off prison guards. But things were different in Alcatraz. For one thing, public enemy number one was suffering from syphilis. Some biographers even think that the disease explains some of his erratic, murderous behavior. He was also watched closely by the warden of Alcatraz, who refused to grant him any of those special privileges he had previously enjoyed. The conditions broke Capone. It looks like Alcatraz has got me licked, he reportedly told his warden. In fact, convict number 85 became so cooperative that he was permitted to play banjo in the Alcatraz prison band, the Rock Islanders, which gave regular Sunday concerts for other inmates. Alcatraz saw eight murders, five suicides, and 15 natural deaths, as well as 36 escape attempts. None, however, have successfully escaped. Many argue that three men did, in fact, in July 1962. Frank Morris and John and Clarence Anglin managed to escape from their cells and attempted to flee the island by using a makeshift raft. The next morning, the routine bed check turned out to be anything but. The three convicts were not in their cells. John Anglin, his brother Clarence, and Frank Morris were missing. In their beds were cleverly built dummy heads made of plaster, flesh tone paint, and real human hair that apparently fooled the night guards. The prison went into lockdown and an intensive search began. The trio's extraordinary escape in which they used sharpened spoons to dig through the walls, was made famous in the 1979 movie Escape from Alcatraz. Some believe the men successfully escaped. Others assumed that Morris and the Anglin brothers drowned after fleeing the island on a raft made of 50 inflated raincoats, though new facial recognition analysis appears to prove that they were in fact successful in their escape. In 2015, a grainy photo emerged that was taken by a family friend of the Anglins, who were allegedly living in Brazil in 1975. And life at Alcatraz wasn't isolated just for the prisoners. Guards and other prison employees lived on the island in separate housing that was once Civil War barracks. Their kids fished in the bay and passed time in social halls that had pool and bowling. Families often took weekend boat trips to nearby Marin to stock up on groceries and other essentials. Whilst they were forbidden to make contact with inmates, a few made a spectator sport of watching new arrivals come in wearing shackles. Even the most typical of Alcatraz's 336 cells were pretty far from comfortable, measuring a meager 5 by 9 feet, which is about the distance of two arms outstretched. Typically, they were very basic, consisting of a bed, sink, toilet, and basic table to write or read. These tiny cells made life both as monotonous and miserable as possible for these prisoners, and it's no wonder the infamous prison had many suicides and broke many minds and spirits. Robert Stroud, Birdman of Alcatraz while Robert Stroud was serving a manslaughter sentence for killing a bartender in a brawl, he fatally stabbed a guard at Leavenworth Prison in 1916. After President Woodrow Wilson commuted his death sentence to a life of permanent solitary confinement, Stroud began to study ornithological diseases, write and illustrate two books, and raise canaries and other birds in his Leavenworth cell. He was ordered to give up his birds in 1931, and he was banned from having any avian cellmates during his 17 years inside Alcatraz, which began in 1942. The 1962 movie Birdman of Alcatraz, for which Burt Lancaster received an Academy Award nomination just weeks before The Rock closed, was therefore largely fictitious. While Alcatraz was certainly not Club Med, its tough-as-nails reputation was a bit of a Hollywood creation. The prison's one-man-per-cell policy appealed to some inmates because it made them less vulnerable to attack by fellow prisoners. And Alcatraz's first warden, James A. Johnston, knew poor food was often the cause of prison riots, so he prided himself on serving good food, and inmates could return for as many helpings as they wanted. 
inmates who behaved had access to privileges including monthly movies and a library with 15,000 books and 75 popular magazine subscriptions. Overall, some prisoners considered the conditions inside Alcatraz to be more attractive than at other federal prisons and several asked to be moved there. It was possible to swim to shore. Federal officials may have initially doubted that any escaping inmates could survive the swim to the mainland across the cold, swift waters of San Francisco Bay, but it did happen. In 1962, prisoner John Paul Scott greased himself with lard, squeezed through a window, and swam to shore. He was so exhausted upon reaching the foot of the Golden Gate Bridge that police discovered him lying unconscious in hypothermic shock. After two decades of intense scrutiny relating to operating costs and confinement practices, on Thursday, March 21st, 1963, the end of an era arrived with the official closure of Alcatraz. The physical structures on Alcatraz were indicating wear and tear that would cost the government millions of dollars to keep the prison running to standard. A new prison would be constructed at Marion, Illinois, to continue incarceration of inmates whose character did not readily accustom themselves to the discipline or avail themselves of the opportunities for training and self-improvement. The Marion facility, more centrally located to service the network of federal prisons, would take over the role that Alcatraz held for nearly three decades. Whether it's simply a perception or an origin of truth. The brutal conditions at Alcatraz proved too controversial in an era when prisons were supposedly committed to the rehabilitation of prisoners. In late August of 1962, the rumors of Alcatraz closing were confirmed when transfer orders for prisoners started flowing in with the first official chain of six inmates was set for permanent departure to USP Leavenworth on September the 10th, 1962. On August 9, 1962, Director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, James Bennett, wrote an official statement to the press announcing its closure and offered insight into their decision. Following an extensive engineering study of the physical structures to determine safety and operational effectiveness, it was determined that Alcatraz had deteriorated to the point where it was potentially unsafe for both inmates and staff. The support structures were at the point where it would soon be unable to support the cell blocks or withstand an earthquake of significant magnitude. Included in his report were references that the catwalks for officers were no longer safe and the electrical system was subject to a catastrophic at any time meltdown. It was also concluded by an assessment firm that it would cost over $4 million and take nearly five years to bring the prison back to standard. In brief, he made it very clear that Alcatraz's days were now numbered.